This is a recording from a book that Soren Kierkegaard wrote in 1843 called Four Edifying Discourses. It's from the fourth essay, To Acquire One Soul in Patience, which was published on December 6, 1843. This reading is from David F. Swenson's translation of 1944, fourth printing, 1962, pages 71 through 74. If a man owns his soul, does he then need to acquire it? And if he does not own it, how can he acquire it, since the soul becomes the final condition which is presupposed in every acquirement? and hence, too, in acquiring the soul. Can there be a possession such that it exactly indicates the condition of being able to acquire the same possession? In the external sense, there is no such possession. For the one who owns the external does not need to acquire it. Furthermore, he cannot do so. He can give away that which he owns, and then see if he will succeed in acquiring exactly the same thing again. He can use what he owns in acquiring something new, but he cannot at one and the same time own and acquire the same thing. If anyone says there is such a possession, then it must be found in the inward man. If it is not found in the external as such, then neither is it found in the temporal as such. For it really is the more closely defined temporal existence which makes it impossible to own and acquire the external at one and the same time. Because that which is of the moment either is or is not. And if it is, then it is not acquired. And if it is acquired, then it is not. A self-contradiction, such as it would be to assert both propositions, the temporal existence does not understand, either as a riddle or as the solution of a riddle. No such self-contradiction exists in the eternal, yet not because, like the temporal, it either is or is not, but because it is. The eternal is not something either possessed or acquired, but it is only a possession, which can just as little be acquired as lost. We must look for this self-contradiction, then, in the inward, if anywhere. But the inward is, in its most universal expression, neither more nor less than the soul. Therefore, we must seek in the soul for that which we went out to find, because of this expression, to acquire one's soul. Hence the soul is the contradiction between the eternal and the temporal, and for that reason can be possessed and acquired at one and the same time. Furthermore, if the soul is this contradiction, it can only be owned in that it is acquired, and acquired in that it is owned. The same contradiction may also be expressed in another way. He who comes naked into the world owns nothing, but he who comes into the world in the nakedness of his soul still owns his soul. It is as that which must be acquired, if he does not have it outside himself, as something new which must be owned. If this were not so, if the apparently empty thought, or this expression of emptiness, the nakedness of the soul, were the soul, then it could not be owned and acquired in any other manner than the external is owned and acquired. Where both owning and acquiring are in a deeper sense an illusion, because that which is acquired can be lost, since it is not owned and that which is owned can be lost, because it is not acquired. On the other hand, that which secures against the ownership of the soul being an illusion is exactly its acquirement, and that which guarantees against its acquirement being an illusion is just the fact 
that it is previously owned in so far then as a man must acquire his soul he does not own it who then does own it for in so far as it exists as it really does since it must be acquired it must belong to someone yet in such a way that it can be acquired not as an external is acquired but so that the one acquiring it acquires his own possession he who wishes to gain the world is assumed to own his own soul could this not also be reversed so that he who wishes to acquire his soul owns the whole world and as the one who wishes to acquire the world gradually gives his soul in exchange for it so he who acquires his soul must have something to give in place of it and what can this be except the world what then do men aspire to the ownership of the world is always a man's first thought since his soul is lost in it and owns the world in itself just as the unrest of the sea and its depths own the tossing of the waves and knows no other heartbeat than the unending beat of the sea it is true that men think that the ownership of the world about which they speak is a very different matter but this is only a delusion for i can only own the world in so far as it owns me and so again it owns the one who has gained the world since whoever owns the world in any other way owns it as the accidental as that which can be diminished increased lost or won without essentially altering his possession of it if on the other hand he owns the world in such a way that the loss of it can diminish his possession then he is owned by the world or does this seem over subtle thanks for listening